I'm back from holiday and I'd like to thank Rustam Kazimjanov and Maxime Vashilagrav for their Game of the Day reports from Beale while I was away. It's fantastic to have two of the strongest players in the world share their insights on the Power Play Chess YouTube channel and thank you very much to them again. Also, uh, you might have noticed our new feature, the 99 Seconds interviews, and thank you very much for all your comments and uh, feedback on those interviews. It helps us to improve them, and there are going to be more of them appearing over the next few weeks and months. We hope to make this a regular feature. In the meantime, I'd like to let you know about my latest DVD release in the Powerplay Chess series. Here we go, let me show you the, the cover. It came out, oops, there we, no, there we go, that's better. It came out just a few weeks ago. It's called Powerplay 22, a repertoire for black with the French defense. Um, I'm very pleased with this. It, as the title suggests, presents a whole repertoire for uh, a, a player with the black pieces against E4 with the French defense. And well, let me share with you um, one of my recommendations. And uh, yeah, just there's a very interesting little trap that uh, is nice to be aware of. And well, who knows, you might be able to use it. I've played the French, uh, well, for, for many, many years. And I can say that it's a very reliable opening, very sound, and yet it gives you very dynamic possibilities. As many of you know, I'm also a great adherent of the Sicilian defence, particularly the Nidor variation. But I would say, and of course they have a different character, but I would say compared to the Sicilian, there is a bit less theory to uh, assimilate uh, when you play this opening. That's one advantage of it. Anyway, let me show you one of my recommendations. So Knight C3 is one of the most popular moves, of course, against the French. And I don't recommend playing the, the Vinava, or the Winnower, as we say in English-speaking countries. I'm actually advocating the classical variation, which, well, I was going to say it's become very popular over the last 20, 30 years. In fact, it's been popular for well over a century, but there have been many new ideas that have been introduced over the last uh, couple of decades. One of the reasons I like this is that it can give black very interesting attacking play on the queen side. And I want to show you one of the ideas here. Uh, of course, there are other ways for white to meet this opening. And uh, well, I go into those on the DVD, but let me just show you one particular variation. You could say this is the starting point of the, the main line of the classical actually. And here black has quite a choice. In this position I've played the capture on d4 and then bishop c5 and then castles kingside and a6 and you, you play down the queen side. I've also played a6 and b5 in this position. Also an, an, a nice way to play. But the move that's become popular over the last dec or decade or so is to, to hold the tension with bishop e7 and just castle very quickly. Now queen d2 is the main move and black castles. I should say that uh, Magnus Carlsen himself has played bishop e7 and this is the move that um, I look at in some detail on DVD. And here the most common moves are to take on c5 and then black can recapture with either bishop or knight. And bishop e2, a reasonable move, and then casting kingside, but it's a more modest way to play for white. But quite a common move here is to play castles queenside. It looks very normal, the normal kind of move in, in this position. But in this particular case, this seemingly natural move is actually a terrible mistake. And here's the trap I want to share with you. Black plays c4. And suddenly, white 
is in a terrible situation on the queen's side. So what's the point of c4? Well, one is that it prevents the bishop coming to d3. And you can see already that that kind of splits white's position in two, because with the d3 square taken away from white's pieces, it's not so easy to switch forces to the queen side to defend. And the basic idea is very simple. Using this pawn as a spearhead, black is going to advance on the queen side with a pawn storm and basically clear lines and open up white's king. And this crude strategy is actually incredibly difficult to meet. Many players play f5 here. I should say we're following the game between uh, Ruland Prices, who's a Dutch player, a reasonably strong Dutch player, and he's playing a uh, Chinese player, uh, Li Shi Long. I mean, it just shows that many players fall into this position. Now, Prices played f5. Of course, it's, it's an attempt to open up lines on the king side for white. But black's best strategy is simply to ignore this and to carry on with his own queenside attack. And in fact, Black's queenside attack is far more dangerous than White's. This really doesn't get very far at all. Well, White exchanged on e6, so no harm done there. And now Black's threat is simply to advance this pawn and follow up with the queen, possibly the knight, uh, play c3 to open up the king position, and the attack is incredibly straightforward, very easy to play. So because of this, white played knight takes b5. b4 really was a potent threat. But of course this opens up the b-file. Rook b8, very simple move, attacking the knight. Now if the knight retreats, then the attack is very simple. And then queen a5, and the dark squares are so weak, this bishop is coming and black actually wins this position very easily. So white tried to block out at least this bishop. But Shilong played very well. He exchanged, got rid of that knight, and played knight b4. What I love about this attack is that it is just straight on the whole way. Black barely pauses. He, he really doesn't need to um, check his stride at any stage. OK, so the threat is obvious to take on a2. So white played king b1. I mean, there are alternatives, but they don't really help that much. Um, knight f6, good move. Excuse me, just one second. It's tea time once again. Um, so the idea is to simply be able to bring the knight into e4, and that looks over at the c3 square. So, for example, if c3, hoping to at least get a bit of connection with the queen side, then knight e4 is terribly strong. So black, white's queen has to keep hold of this. Okay, if the queen goes back, you take here, you just smash open the lines and check, and then you take on c3, that's pinned, and the attack breaks through very easily. So white played in this position a3. Then knight e4 to attack the queen, so throwing another piece in. Queen e1 to cover the c3 square, otherwise the knight would, would hop in. And now c3. So the idea is just to, uh, well, create a mating net, really. So white has to um, keep things closed. If he takes the knight, then black breaks through very, very easily. So queen a5, and now rook a4 is a nice move. Okay, so you give a rook, but it just opens lines. And you can see that this pawn just prevents white's pieces coming over to defend. And it's, it's actually very, very easy. So let me just go on a few moves and show what happens. So the queen comes back, threat, queen takes bishop, and, well, black just blocks out the queen from the defence, and well, there are two threats in this position: queen takes bishop and pawn takes rook. So, white tried to 
keep things relatively closed, but the queen came over again. Pawn takes, knight loses in the same way as before. So bishop c1, white is trying to hold things together, but black is just breaking through. And this is decisive. I, I really like this. What black's next move is very calm, so having sacrificed a piece, he just plays bishop d7. <laughs> With a very simple threat of bishop a4. So, for example, if bishop d3, bishop a4, and that breaks through to the king. But white tried b4, but this is absolutely hopeless. A check. Well, king b1 will be met by rook takes pawn, and black breaks through easily. White tried king d3. c2 is very embarrassing, so threatening to take the rook. And now the queen checks and it's mate and queen takes rook and that was that very easy win and it all comes back to this position where the very natural move castles is a mistake allowing c4 and then white is in a huge trouble if you want to know more details about this system, do check out my DVD. There we are, I'm going to show it to you again. It's available from the Chess Base shop online. Very easy to find and you can have it in DVD form uh, or as a download. Um, there's also, uh, as well as 10 model games where I present my repertoire suggestions, there's also a database of supplementary games that uh, will help you to learn the system. Thanks very much.